mom says hi, Jinx. This was my first time actually seeing a, uh, I guess we'll call it brake style connecting rod. Um, so some uh, manufacturers, they just kind of machine them flush uh, as far as the rod goes, but others and certain engine applications, they forge it as one piece and then they break it. Uh, so the result is this really rough looking um, surface and at first I was like, what? These are broken. I was like, oh, oh. I've never actually seen it before um, that I can remember. Maybe I, I haven't rebuilt that many engines. And yeah, as a note on these piston rings, uh, I am not an engine builder. This is about the only piece of advice I have to give. But uh, you want to place the rings about 180 out from each other. So the gap for the top ring, the compression ring, is over here, and the gap for the secondary ring is over here, and the gap for the other oil ring is down here. Simple idea is if these were lined up like that, um, air will literally just go right through that and out, and you'll have no compression. So, my only piece of engine building advice is simply put the rings 180 out. So I got the pistons in, I was ready to like reassemble this engine, but uh, we gotta call it quits uh, because uh, the freaking tensioner for the oil pump broke somehow, but I guess probably when I was taking the oil pan off and on, it's really irritating this happened because I was fixing to put this engine in the car. So uh, that's a wrap for this weekend, I've done as much prep work as I can, uh, like everything Everything that needs to be painted is painted. Uh, yeah, it's it's kind of really, really irritating. So yeah, this is probably next weekend this is going to happen. Uh, so yeah, FML. Well, I pretty much glossed over me putting the engine together because it's a very tedious and annoying uh, task to try to remember where you put everything that has been kind of hanging out for like a month. Um, that took like a lot of time. Um, but the engine is in here. Uh, it, I have fitment issues, honestly. Um, this hood no longer closes uh, as is. I'm going to have to do something about that. I'm not really sure what, uh, but it's not, it's not even close. Like, it just, the uh, manifold hits on the top of the hood. So, I don't know if I'm just going to go for like maximum steez points and just straight cut a hole here. Um, what I might try to do is use a diff cover of like a truck or something to make kind of like a lump. Because really that's the only part that has a clearance issue. Everything else pretty much fits. This downpipe uh, is going to have to make a pretty damn sharp turn down. Um, it barely sneaks past the subframe. It, it's gonna be tight. I'm gonna have probably cut out like a part of the subframe right here. I wish I knew that before I put the engine in, but you know, it is what it is. Uh, but yeah, and then that's gonna have to make a quite sharp turn. And of course, you're gonna have the same problem with the axle kind of really being in the way. So we'll see what I can do about that. Once I put the throttle body on, it's gonna be a pretty sharp downturn. Um, first of all, I discovered that I cannot install this engine with the throttle body on. Uh, that was annoying. I had to take it out. I honestly kind of jacked the engine bay up when it got stuck. was not happy about that. Um, the paint was pretty good in this engine bay. Uh, yeah, I, I kind of nicked it up real bad actually trying to stuff it in there. Like it went in 
and then it just got wedged, and then I couldn't get it out. Um, but it did ultimately kind of bolt right in, um, aside from the fact this motor tilts back a lot further than I thought it did, and this manifold sits so high up, because the 2.0 kind of went back, which has a lot more clearance back here than it did up front. So, like I said, I might just, for the sake of getting it to H2O, just, just cut a hole right in the hood. Uh, I'll have to repaint it anyway, because at best, I'll still have to cut, like, here. Um, I do have, still, do still have the paint. Um, I think it'll still work. It's been there for, like, a year? I'm sure it'll be alright. Um, but now, right now, we're gonna get working on fabricating the new intercooler setup. We're gonna see about this downpipe. Um, again, I really wish I had thought that I about cutting that subframe out. I do not feel like taking the engine back out. It was such a pain to get it in there, actually. We're going to go two and a quarter for the discharge, or for the charge pipe side, down to the intercooler, and then once it gets past the intercooler, we're going to go to two and a half, if I can, if I have enough space there, which I think I will. Um, yeah, I got loads of space. Yeah, that'll work. Um, but yeah, we got to get it wired, we got to get a couple odds and ends, I need a clip for that and some other things, but yeah, let's get to it. So this 1.8T manifold is about to be the bane of my existence on this swap. A, I'm definitely going to have to straight cut a hole in the hood, like there's, there's going to be just a fat hole right there. Um, like this is, it doesn't even come close to fitting. Not only that, but the intercooler piping is literally going to be going inside the headlight. There's nothing I can do about it, it's the only, like I, I, like I have like three inches to work with here. It is what it is, so. Yeah, it's literally going to be, like, inside the headlight. Good thing it's the cold side. Um, I hope it works. Uh, if not, I think it's just like a... I don't know. I like the, the ability to drive at night, but um, this light might be more for show than function after um, we get this intercooler pipe set up. Yeah, we have to cut into the headlight support, uh, and then literally into the headlight, like, this adjustment screw is going to be completely gone. And there's gonna be a pipe there, so um, yeah, it is what it is.
All right, so I'm calling it quits. One thing I don't like is welding uh, downpipes, exhaust, or honestly anything in a garage uh, in the summer. And it doesn't help that my neighbors are playing Frisbee and they keep hitting my garage with the Frisbee. So while I'm welding, it like hits the garage and makes this really loud banging noise. So like while I'm working, it's like someone just bashing on the door like police. Uh, so yeah, that's been kind of annoying. Uh, Lord, forgive me for the monstrosity that is this downpipe. I am not remotely proud of it. I will redo it later. It is literally three downpipes put together. I bought uh, two and a half inch piping uh, to do this, but then I discovered that I actually did have enough room with the way that the KO4 comes off of it. Uh, to actually have a three inch downpipe. It is so frustrating welding something like a downpipe on a car on the on the ground with like a foot and a half, maybe two feet of clearance. Uh, you got sparks falling in your face. You're trying to hold eight things at the same time on your back while making sure everything, like that's not even sealed, whatever. It's all tack welded together. I will weld it together. My God, this is a monstrosity, but uh, whatever it'll get the job done. Well, I really can't believe how bad this looks. Um, yeah, there's yeah There's no way it's gonna stay on the car for for long. Um, I will eventually redo this at the end of the day. I Do have a functional downpipe set up. I do have my intercooler piping. I do have Pretty much all the air induction stuff ready to go for this thing. Um, again, I do have a, a, a kind of a deadline. I almost think I'm gonna make it. I didn't make it last time. Um, and every hurdle I keep hitting isn't making me super confident I'm gonna hit it on this time. But hey, we're gonna try it. The worst case is the deadline actually gets things done um, as opposed to just sitting in a driveway like most projects car for most project cars do for like years and someone's like, I'm, I'm gonna finish it soon. At the end of the day, I did get an engine rebuilt and in here, a downpipe done, an entirely new intercooler setup done, while having my house painted and a fence installed in about two or three weeks. So uh, I am doing pretty good, par for the course, honestly. Um, I'm a bit tired, just in general. It has been triple digit heat indexes the past like couple weeks. It's finally dipped into like the high 80s, which is nice uh, but yeah I'm just kind of exhausted because again mind you this isn't just like not this is a hobby but I do also do this as a profession for like 50 hours a week 50 to 55 hours every week I am done for the day I am hungry I'm gonna eat it is Labor Day and I've done nothing but labor um, this isn't even my whole day I went over to my mom's house helped her move stuff and I installed a, a lamp at, at my own house so it is like seven o'clock I am signing off hopefully the next episode we will be turning the key hopefully to what is not a puff of smoke and or a no start so uh yeah i i'm, I'm that tired i don't even know how to how to give a good sign off deuces